Well, what's up, everybody? This is Rob from LearnBridge.nyc, and I want to share with you a hand I played in a bridge-based online tournament the other day. It's a really cool hand, and it has a lot of good tidbits for no trump play, right? And a lot of you uh, are questioning all of your decisions in no trump contracts, including do I hold up? Should I try to take extra tricks? Am I safe? Am I not safe? And this hand has a little bit of everything to discuss in those areas. So first off, before we ever do anything, if we're playing a contract, we want to go through what we know first. And that starts with, hey, how many winners do we have on this hand? And, and here we can start off just by counting the cards that are taking tricks right now, meaning we can take these tricks immediately. And right now we have three diamonds, the king and the ace and the queen. We have the ace of clubs for four, and we have the ace of hearts for five. And that's it so far. Now, I know all of you are saying, well, my goodness, we're going to take more than five tricks, and you're absolutely right. And that's because we have a really nice club suit of six cards, and Dummy actually has ace third of that suit. So we're certainly going to take a lot of club tricks. It looks like at least five, unless something truly disastrous happens. So here, we kind of have a very good strategy right away. But we can only count five winners at this point, because really, those are the only tricks that are good right now. But you should also think about the auction. And here, there's a little bit of an odd auction. Uh, I opened a no trump with this hand because I was feeling a little funky, and I think I was behind in this tournament, so I wanted to swing a little bit. Uh, but obviously, you know, this isn't a normal auction on this hand, but we find ourselves in a good contract. But the opponents certainly didn't give us anything on the auction, right? However, they might have given us some information on the opening lead. We see a low diamond being led, which should suggest, and the robots do make some weird leads sometimes, but in a real situation, this would almost certainly be a fourth best lead. So we should expect the West player to have either the Jack, the Ten of Diamonds, or both. Right? We know they don't have Jack-10-9 because they would have led the Jack. Right, So even though you know, this lead doesn't give us a ton of information, at least we kind of have some idea of what it is supposed to be. Right? And we should also notice that if playing clubs is our best strategy, we probably want to win this trick in our hand so that we can take a club finesse. We have the Queen-Jack in our hand and the Ace and Dummy. So here we're going to play a low diamond. We see the Jack get produced to the East, and this is where you should say to yourself, okay, it seems now 100% that West has the 10 for two reasons. They did lead fourth best, so they're supposed to have an honor, and the 10 is an honor, folks. And if East had Jack-10, they would have played the 10 and not the Jack. So these are little tidbits you can gain from your opponents just by the way they play their cards. So we're going to win our King of Diamonds here and get to the business of setting up our best suit, right, which is clearly clubs. So here I took a, a club finesse. I played the Queen. And it went all the way around to East's king. And then they led back a heart. And if you received an email this morning, uh, this first few tricks is on that email. And the question is, what do we do now? And at the beginning of each hand, we're certainly going to go over our process. But we're going to continue that throughout the play of the cards. Right? So here, I'm going to count my winners again. right? Because something really big just happened. The club suit became good. So now I can count all of my winners. I already took one trick at the beginning, and I have five extra clubs, so that's six total. I still have two diamond tricks, so that's eight total. And I have the ace of hearts, that's nine. So do I just rip off nine tricks here and call it a day? And the answer sometimes is yes, right? If you're in danger of the opponents running a suit on you, right, if they set up a long suit of their own, you would certainly not risk doing anything but playing the ace here. However, take a look at this hand. We're not in any danger at all. And we only have nine tricks so far, right? If we take all of our tricks right now, we're only taking nine. It looks like we can at least do somewhat better, especially considering that if we play the 10 and it loses, the right person is gonna be on lead for us, right? They can't actually lead through the heart suit again. And we have a spade trick that we might be able to set up. So here, you should always be playing low because you're not in any danger. And really, if you ripped off all your tricks right now, you would only have nine, right? If you had 12 tricks right now, clearly you would take the ace of hearts, right? So that's why it's helpful to continually count your winners and see if you can afford to go mining for extra tricks. So here's where I play the 10 of hearts and the robot takes it with the king. And now they lead another heart. So boom, 
I've taken one extra trick already. So here's why I go through the process again. <laughs> I know this seems repetitive, but it's very important to know what to do next. So I've gained a trick and I've also lost an extra trick. Right? So right now I have two tricks and the opponents have two tricks. Let's count the winners again. That Jack of Hearts has now become good. So on top of the two tricks I have already, I now have five more club tricks. That's a total of seven. I have the Jack of Hearts for eight. And I have the Ace Queen of Diamonds for ten total tricks. And right now, I have only lost two tricks so far. Right? So at this point, I can actually take ten total tricks, and that would be for making four. Okay? If I try to set up an extra trick, spades for instance, I'm going to lose a trick in that wash, unless for some reason they foolishly duck the ace of spades. Okay? So I can make four by playing a spade, or I can make four by running all of my tricks. Take a second, which do you think is better? So for those of you that have had long suits run against you before, you should know that playing all of your clubs first is usually going to be the best course of action because now the opponents have to choose what to throw away. And the only thing we really know so far is that our left-hand opponent started with four diamonds. At least that's very likely based on the carding we've seen so far. So what we're going to be watching for specifically here is if the West player throws a diamond or more than one diamond because now that little five of diamonds in the dummy this tiny little card here could become our 12th trick. But also, if the opponents make a mistake and throw some good spades away, now we're going to have the opportunity to actually take a trick in spades instead of diamonds. But we can't do this unless we start running our clubs. And this is a cool little spot here. We know we lost two tricks already, and we can take 10 total. So you can give up a trick and not take any chance to take 11 or you can try to put some pressure on the opponents, which is exactly what we're about to do. And what we're really hoping for is that our left-hand opponent has both the ace of spades and the long diamond suit. And if they have to get down to a certain number of cards to hold, they might be in some trouble. So we're just going to watch their hand. So I'm going to run the clubs here, and we see lefty pitch two spades. We're going to continue playing clubs. Boom. They just pitched a diamond. So when this happens, I know I've given you a lot already, but think, think about this. You started with six total in diamonds between the two hands, and we saw one trick already. So that was seven and eight. This is the ninth diamond we've seen. All right? We're just going to file that away. and We're never going to pitch that diamond, at least until the end. All right? So now I'm going to continue to play clubs. Still know we've seen nine diamonds total. There's 10. Okay, there's 11. Boom. Just the fact that we're counting diamonds lets us know that that diamond suit is now good. Just for good measure, we're going to cash our jack of hearts. We need to have that. And we can now confidently pitch this queen of spades. And now when we lead a diamond to the dummy, they're all going to be good. And I can show you the west hand here. And let's back this up and take a quick peek at what just happened to west. So now I've backed it up a few tricks, and I want you to see this from a full view of the hand here. And you can see what South is going to be doing here. Just like we were, we're going to run our clubs. And West pitched all their diamonds away, but let's, let's just play around with it a little bit. Let's see what their options are going to be. So we'll have them pitch hearts first, which would make the most sense, to be honest, initially, if you were defending this hand. So we're going to play clubs, and they're going to throw away their hearts. We're going to do the same thing we did from Dummy. And now we're going to play another club, and they're still safe at this point. At this moment, that west hand still has a trick. However, I still have the good jack of hearts in my hand. So the moment I lead this card is the moment that the west player can no longer make a good pitch. Right? They're essentially going to have to throw away a trick. If they pitch the ace of spades, we have an easy pitch of a diamond, and we have the rest of the tricks. And if they pitch a diamond, as long as we're paying attention and counting the diamonds and obviously hoping they have this particular holding, we're going to confidently pitch away the queen of spades 
And now if we don't see the ace of spades on our right, we know that, okay, our last chance is to play a diamond. All right. So we're going to get to this naturally, but this is what's called the squeeze. We've seen this before in some of the videos, and this just happens kind of naturally when the opponents didn't take the best opportunity to take all their tricks early. You can see that West could have cashed their ace of spades at any point, but they gave us a chance. It's kind of the, the essence of every good bridge game. If you can convert as many of your opponent's mistakes into good scores, you're doing well, right? But you have to know to take advantage of them. Right? And the best way to do it on a lot of these no-trump hands is to make sure you have a solid understanding of your winners and what your other options are. Right, Whenever you have a long suit, folks, and a chance for extra tricks, running that suit is hardly ever going to be bad for you. Right? Just run it and see what the opponents are doing. A lot of times they'll surprise you with what they throw away. So until next time, folks, this is Rob Barrington signing off. I'll see you at the tables. Take care.